Uh, hello, we continue our lecture about biotechnology with the fourth topic, uh, recombinant DNA technology and genomics. We'll deal with uh, five topics. Generally, the um, applications of recombinant technology is widely used in biotechnology medicine and research. It's used to identify and map sequence identify, map, and sequence genes and to determine their function. Recombinant DNA is used to produce recombinant human insulin, for example, gross hormone, for example, for example insulin resist resistant crops. By, uh, by bacteriophage are viruses that infect bacterial cells. In 1970, gene cloning became a real reality. What is a clone? A clone is a molecule or a cell or an organism that was produced from another single entity. It's made possible by the discovery of restriction enzymes, which are DNA cutting enzymes. The plasmid and plasmid DNA vector is a self form of self replicating DNA, generally present in bacteria, can be manip manipulated to carry and clone other pieces of DNA. What is restriction enzymes? Restriction enzymes is primarily found in bacteria. They use these for defense against viral infections because they lack immune system. Uh, these enzymes are endonucleases and cut DNA by cleaving the phosphodiester bond in DNA strand. They bind and recognize cut DNA with the specific sequences called the restriction sites. Each restriction site is palindromic. What's meaning of palindromic means that reads the same from forward and backward on opposite strands of DNA. Remember the word madame, you can read it palindromic from right or left is the same. These enzymes cut DNA to create DNA fragment either with overhanging single strands ends called the sticky or cohesive ends or with double stranded ends it's called the blunt ends. The advantage of this enzyme that can produce sticky ends it is preferred for for cloning because DNA fragment with sticky end can be can be easily joined together because they base bear with each other. Why don't restriction enzymes digest its own bacterial DNA? Actually, if we look to this diagram, we will see that DNA restriction enzyme, which is called ECHO R1, uh, can produce, after uh, recognizing the restriction site, can reproduce the unmethylated form of DNA and cleave it into two cohesive ends. While in bacteria, this, uh, this um, restriction site is, uh, is uh, methylated. You can see it is methylated. So once this restriction site is methylated, the echo R1 methylase, uh, the echo R1 enzyme cannot recognize the restriction site. And that's how the bacteria protect its own DNA from being cut with, with the enzymes. Uh, this is like common restriction enzymes used. You don't need to memorize uh, this uh, uh, figure. You can see there is three types of restriction sites which create blunt ends. In this figure, you can see uh, four types of restriction enzyme: ECHO R1, HEND3, BAMH1, and TAC1. They create co cohesive ends or sticky ends. What ECHO R1 cut the following sequence, explain your answer. Just check if ECHO R1 can cut this uh, sequence. Um, do it as an exercise. You can uh, go for the 7 restriction enzyme 4 here, for the ECHO R1 restriction site and to compare and see if it will cut this sequence or not. Now, how to find the right restriction enzyme? So if you have a DNA in hand, how you find the right restriction enzyme for the right uh, DNA sequence that you have? Using an online software, it's called Nepcutter version 2, this is the website, this is the link for the website, you'll have this kind of page, you have local uh, sequence, so if you have the file already uh, saved on your um, uh, computer, and if you have the number, and instead of saving just the ID, if you, if you don't have a number or the file and just have the sequence, okay, uh, you need to choose if it's a plasmid vector or a linear DNA. So you insert, if you have just the sequence, just insert the DNA sequence here. And once you insert, uh, you can choose if it's linear or circle, and then submit. Once you submit, here is the sequence, and you submit. Once you submit, you can see the sequence um, have been shown uh, with all the multi uh, all, with all the restriction enzymes that can cut and the location of the restriction uh, cut so you can see this uh, this small sequence of dna can be cut by around like 1 2 3 4 5 different restriction enzymes 
Echo R1, of course, you can see uh, that it can cut this uh, restriction, uh, this DNA sequence. Here is the key for the figure. Uh, you can exercise doing the same with any sequence of your choice on the online uh, uh, onli online platform. What is plasmid DNA? Small circular pieces of DNA found primarily in bacteria. They are around uh, uh, one to four kilo base pair are considered extra chromosomal, chromosomal DNA because they are in the cytoplasm in addition to the bac bacterial chromosomes they can replicate independent of the chromosome and can be used as vector so you can set, can accept pieces of DNA uh, carry and replicate other pieces of DNA so if you can see the general plan of any plasmid vector it consists of three um, regions uh, the ORI which is the origin of replication if, let's start with the multiple cloning site MCS or the polyrinkle Polylinker. It's a sequence of DNA that have all the restriction uh, sites for these enzymes, and this, this is the region where the gene uh, the gene you want to insert into the plasmid is inserted here. Uh, there is uh, so how to create a recombinant DNA. First, you have the DNA, the human DNA. The human DNA, uh, if we assume that it will be cut by Echo R1, so it will produce a, a, a cohesive end like um, uh, this, uh, two cohesive ends. So you get this cohesive end, uh, and you insert this cohesive end to, uh, to the plasmid, which is, uh, have been cut by the same restriction enzyme used for the cutting the human DNA. So here you can see that the plasmid that have been cut by the same restriction enzyme, in this example it's Echo R1, have been ligated with the enzyme, with the, uh, the piece of DNA that have been cut to form a recombinant DNA. Uh, it's, it's like a straightforward experiment, doesn't take, uh, takes like one hour in, in, in 37 degree, needs the enzyme ligase. So finally the recombinant DNA is formed by uh, uh, from uh, 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 insertion of a piece of DNA, uh, the most the most important thing here that the both of both of the human DNA and the plasmid used for insertion must be cut by the same restriction enzyme to have the same cohesive end to facilitate the ligation. In this figure, you can see that we plate on LB agar. The, uh, the LB agar contain ampicillin. Uh, then uh, ampicillin sensitive E. coli cell in log phase of growth is transformed with the use of calcium chloride. Then we add, we add the cells, incubate the cells with the cells are heat shocked at 40 T number 3. Heat shock at 40 degree, 42 degrees centigrade. Uh, this uh, bacteria is called combinant bacteria. will take up the plasmid because at 42 degree the uh, there is um, pores arise in the wall of the bacteria and take up plasmids the recombinant one then we blade this uh, or inoculate, uh, inoculate uh, blade these bacteria on the lb agar which have ampicillin and incubate overnight at 37 degree the colon is only colonies number six only colonies of e coli that have been transformed by the ampicillin resistant gene will grow other one which will not which which you didn't took up the plasmid will die so to see the result of the transformation process we, we took this uh, 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 bacteria and the blade on no ampicillin in gross media and blade in ampicillin in gross media you can see that uh, the plasmid that um, uh, you can see that in control one and control two no bacteria arise in um, no bacteria um, have been grown on the plate with the ampicillin because there is no ampicillin uh, resistant plasmid is added okay so in this case if ampicillin resistant is added you can see that some few bacteria um, uh, are grown on the ampicillin in the gross media that's mean this kind of bacteria uh, succeeded in, in in taking up the recombinant plasmid so uh, let's place the stages uh, of uh, transformation of, of order. You can see that this is like a shoveled uh, uh, transformation steps. And if you look closely, it's A, B, C, D. You need to put in this order. And of course, this is the answer. You can uh, um, revision that. The first step is C, then followed by B, D, E, A. So 
continue our talk about selection of recombinant bacteria after transformation there is a there is a, an easy way to select using a, a concept called the blue white selection dna is cloned into the restriction site dna is cloned this means the insert the gene you want to insert inside the plasmid so dna is cloned into the restriction site in the lac z gene when it is interrupted by an inserted gene the lac z gene the lac z gene cannot produce functional beta gal when X gal, which is like artificial lactose, is added to the plate, if function lag Z is present, there is a blue colony. The colony of the bacteria will be blue. Blue. If non-functional lag Z, that's mean the lag Z sequence of DNA have been interrupted by insertion of a gene. A white colony will be produced. That's a genetically identical bacterial cell, each contain copying of recombinant plasmid. To summarize that, this means if I have a recombinant plasmid and the, if I have a bacteria and the bacteria give me white color, that means these bacteria have taken up the recombinant plasmid. If give me a blue color, that means these bacteria didn't take up the, recomb the recombinant plasmid, okay? Assume you use the plasmid that contain the lag Z gene in the restriction enzyme site. The plasmid has an antibiotic resistant genes. Following transformation, you grow up the cells on agar plate containing the antibiotic. And you can see here, here is your results. You can see this is like three white and three blue. Of course, the three white will take up the plasmid, while the, the blue will uh, have, uh, having taken up the plasmids. You can again for the blue white selection. So you can see here in one you isolate the plasmid which you have a bacterial chromosome and the plasmid. You need to cut two, you need to cut both DNA sequence with the same uh, restriction enzyme. And this uh, plasmid will have now the lag Z gene you can see and the amp ampicillin resistant gene amp R. And this plasmid have an origin of replication, it's the region which you control the replication of the own replication of the plasmid. So now this plasmid have a leg Z gene. This, uh, this uh, leg Z gene contain a number of restriction sites for restriction enzyme. You can see five different restriction enzyme. ECOR1, SMA, PAM, H1, HIND3, HIND HIND TAC1. So if you cut again this plasmid with any of these restriction enzyme, and now you insert the gene of interest, the 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 uh, black one you insert inside the lag Z gene once this this mean that the lag Z gene which normally normally produce blue color when uh, X gal uh, artificial lactose is put is in, is introduced into the medium of the bacteria but when it's interrupted with the gene of interest here you can see that the colony will be will be will look like uh, 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 white so once uh, this gene is introduced, you can see that now the plasmid after transformation and you grow up the colonies, you will see that these colonies will contain the uh, recombinant plasmid. And here is, uh, this is, uh, looks like the shape of the blade on a medium with ampicillin and X gal. So let's talk about introduction to human gene cloning. First, the human, human protein expressed via recombinant technique was insulin and next was and next was gross hormones. Clone human insulin DNA sequence into a plasmid and the bacterial cells were then used to synthesize a protein of interest. In 1977, the insulin gene was cloned in, into plasmid, expressed in the bacterial cells and isolated by scientists at GeneTech First Company, biotechnology company co-founded in 76 to produce insulin. In 82, the recombinant form of human insulin, which is called humulene, became the first recombinant DNA product to be approved by human application by the US, uh, uh, by FDA. Gross hormone was isolated from the pituitary gland of human cadavers. It was very expensive, very inefficient, and bore the risk of unknowingly co viruses and other pathogens as contaminants that could be passed of people to people receiving the hormone. The second topic, what makes a good vector? Practical feature of DNA uh, cloning vectors. What's the practical feature of DNA cloning vectors? The size. The size is small enough. 
it is small enough to, to be easily separated from chromosomal DNA of host plasmid, the origin of replication. Every plasmid have an origin of replication, which is a site for DNA replication that allow plasmid to replicate, replicate independently from the host chromosomes, the copy number. The number of plasmid in the cell, normally it have a high copy number. Multiple cloning site, which is a polylinker. It's a, it's a region in the plasmid that have several restriction enzyme in which you insert the gene into selectable selectable marker genes, which is a, a, a antibiotic selection, allow to select the transformed colonies like MR, TET, R, like Z. Have a RNA polymerase promoter sequences used for transcription in vitro and in vivo. All of these are practical feature of the plasmid used in recombinant technology. Types of ve vectors. You have bacterial plasmid vector and these can clone inserts that are smaller than 7 kb. So if you have a gene that is smaller than 7 kb, you can use bacterial plasmid vectors. Some express eukaryotic proteins f from genes poorly. Bacteriophage vectors, cosmid vectors, bacterio, uh, bacterial artificial chromosome, BAC, yeast artificial chromosome, YAC, and TI vectors are other types of vectors. If you look at this table, please, uh, you need to study the sizes and the types of the uh, vectors this, uh, from this table. So you can see this is a comparison between just said uh, types of vector, uh, vectors, bacteriophage vectors, cosmid, uh, bacterial plasmid vectors, BACs and YACs and TI vectors, and the size of these vectors. Continuing the types of vectors, the bacteriophage vectors, it's a recombinant DNA, recombinant DNA are packaged into viral particle in vitro. These phages, these phages then infect lone of E. coli cells, these enzymes, uh, these uh, viruses. These zones of dead bacteria, we call it plagues, contain millions of recombinant phage particles. So basically we use the uh, virus to generate our recombinant protein. Cosmid vectors. Recombinant cosmid is packaged into viral particles and used to infect E. coli cells. So basically, in these two types, we use the, very, the, the virus, the mechanism of virus of infection, to transfer the DNA into the bacteria. Bacterial colonies are grown on the blade and the recombinants are screened by antibiotic selection, the same way we screened before. Bacteria expression, expression vectors allow this is these allow high level protein expression in bacterial cells because they have a prokaryotic promoter next to the multiple cloning sites. Bacterial RNA polymerase can then bind to the promoter and transcribe the insert sequence and then translate it into protein and then you can provide it as a recombinant protein. The problem with the bacteria expression vectors sometimes bacteria ribosomes cannot translate eukaryotic sequences or protein is not and or protein is not folded correctly since bacteria doesn't have the organelle for processing. So this is a major problem between um, uh, using a bacteria with a eukaryotic protein. Either can, the ribosome cannot read the messenger RNA or cannot the fold the protein properly, uh, eukaryotic protein properly. The back bacterial artificial chromosome, its large low copy chromosome, a plasmid, can accept large size of DNA insert up to 300 kb. We, uh, were used during the human genome project to clone and sequence large pieces of chromosomes. The yak uh, yeast artificial chromosome, small plasmid grown in E. coli and introduced to yeast cells as a VC, uh, best for cloning very large DNA up to 2 megabase, uh, were used for human gene project. T TI vector only exclusively naturally occurring plasmid isolated from the bacteria that is a soil plant pathogen causing disease in plants. When the bacteria infect the plant cells, bacteria infect the plant cells, the tDNA from the TI plasmid inserts into the host chromosome. tDNA uh, codes for uh, important hormone for the plants is called auxin that weakens the plant cell wall and the infected uh, plants divided and enlarged to form a tumor. It's a kind of a, 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 a promote growth. It's a, kind of, uh, it's a kind of a tumor for the plants. Scientists use TI vector to deliver genes to plants by removing toxic genes for, for auxins. So basically, TI is the only vector from these type of vectors that is used to introduce, to introduce DNA into plants, the others into animals.
How do you identify the cloned gene of interest? You need uh, uh, as a way uh, as a way to 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 identify gene of interest. You need to create a DNA library. Well, actually, it's a building a collection of cloned genes. These are collection of cloned DNA fragments for, from a particular organism contained within a bacteria or virus as a host. Then they are screened to pick out different genes of interest. There are two types of libraries, genomic DNA libraries and complementary DNA libraries. We normally say it uh, cDNA libraries. Genomic libraries. Genomic libraries, chromosomal DNA from the tissue of interest, say for instance liver, is isolated and digested with restriction enzyme, which produce many fragments that in include the entire genome. Vector is digested with the same enzyme. DNA ligase is used to ligate genomic DNA fragments into vector DNA. These recombinant vector are used to transform bacteria and theoretically each bacteria will contain a recombinant plasmid. The disadvantage of, so basically you will have a collection of bacteria collection of bacteria each bacteria will have like a collection of the um, pieces of the DNA that have been restricted uh, that have been digested by with a restriction enzyme inserted into the recombinant plasma the disadvantage of genomic libraries enters entrons are cloned in addition to exons because you you digest you rest, uh, do restriction enzymes for the whole DNA with the exons and entrons so basically you need the functional genes only so the one first DS advantage is uh, uh, entrons are cloned in addition to exons. The majority of genomic DNA is entron in, eu in eukaryotes, so majority of the library will contain non-coding piece of DNA. And of course, you know that two percent, around two percent of the total DNA is exons, is coding. Other disadvantages include many organisms have very large genomes, so searching for the gene of interest is extremely difficult, and of course it's a time consuming. So ha this is how you do human gene li uh, library. So you have the human DNA, you restrict, you do, you do cleavage by restriction enzyme, you have a lot of fragments, you combine this fragment with the same plasmid which is cut, cut by the same restriction enzymes so basically you will have a library of bacteria a genomic library contain all restriction fragments of human DNA inserted as a human genome uh, as a library uh, if you look closely you can see here that uh, um, the other one uh, for the cDNA library uh, the difference between the the major difference between cDNA library in that you work on the messenger RNA so you take from the human any cell type from the human the total messenger RNA you extract the total messenger RNA you do reverse transcription so you have the, the DNA uh, tem uh, you, ha you do reverse transcription so you will have the DNA sequence and then uh, doing a PCR you can see that you have the double strand um, DNA sequence and then you use this DNA sequence to insert into a plasmid using the same restriction enzyme as well so here you cut with echo R1 and then cut the, uh, the plasmid with echo R1 and you ligate both of them and you introduce into the bacteria so you can see here that the major difference between both of them that in the second one the cDNA cloning uh, cDNA library you only deal with the genes that have been expressed because you st the start the starting material is messenger RNA while in the first one the human genome DNA library uses the whole DNA so some, a lot of entrons will be introduced inside the bacteria while the in the other cDNA library there is no entrant all of them are messenger RNA that have been reverse transcribed so the cDNA library uses the messenger RNA from tissue of interest is isolated. Uh, this double-stranded cDNA is made by reverse transcription. This uh, messenger RNA is then degraded either by enzyme or alkaline solution. The DNA polymerase is used to synthesize a second strand of DNA to create double strand. Uh, there is a short linker you add at the end of the, uh, the new double-stranded format, which have the restriction site to be easily uh, 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 digested by the restriction enzyme. This linker cDNA are cut with the restriction enzyme, cut the vector with the same restriction enzyme, ligate the fragment to the vector, and then you transform to have a recombinant bacteria. The advantage, it is a col actually a collection of actively expressing genes in cell tissue from which the messenger RNA was isolated. Of course, entrons are not cloned, can be created and screened to isolate genes that are primarily expressed only under certain conditions in a tissue. So if you need to know 
If you, you are testing a drug on the liver and you need to know which genes are active upon introduction of these drugs, so once you treat the drug, you collect the messenger RNAs that is formed after the drug treatment and you try to see what genes are uh, have been uh, transcribed uh, because you take the messenger RNA, okay? Test time, so assume that a gene involved in increased the muscle mass. Gene is involved in increased muscle mass. is expressed when the muscle cells are exposed to growth hormone. What would be the source of the cDNA library? Muscle cell or muscle exposed to growth hormone? Explain your answer, okay? Think about these questions. Disadvantage can be difficult to make the cDNA library if the source of tissue with an abundant amount of messenger RNA for the genetic for the gene is not available. So you need after that you do library screening to identify the gene interest because in in both cases you have DNA sequences that have been introduced into bacteria and you have a lot of bacteria that have a lot of sequences either come from the uh, human DNA or come from the messenger RNA either the genomic or a cDNA library. So you need to um, pinpoint the gene of interest. So bacterial colonies containing recombinant DNA are grown on an agar plate. Used nylon on nitrous cellulose filter is placed over the plate and some of the bacteria colonies stick to the filter at the exact location they were in the plate. Treat filter with alkaline solution to lyse the cell and of course to denature the DNA. Denature DNA bind to the filter as a single stranded DNA. The filter is incubated with a probe. The probe is actually is a small sequence of DNA that is radioactive radioactive labeled or have a fluorescent dye. The probe is a DNA fragment that is complementary to the gene of interest you, you, uh, you are testing. The probe binding binds to complementary and this process uh, to the complementary sequence. So probe is a small sequence of DNA that is labeled either by radioactive nucleotide or fluorescent dye. And when it binds to the uh, its specific uh, complementary sequence of DNA uh, this called is hybridization. So filter, this all is happening um, above the filter. The filter is washed to remove excess unbound probe. Filter is exposed to film autoradiography auto if you're using uh, radioactive nucleotides. Anywhere, the probe has to bound to the filter. So if the probe bound to the to the filter, that means the probe have found its complementary sequence. And of course you know the sequence of the probe because you already designed it. So once it bound, you can uh, have the signal on the film. This radioactivity or fluorescent intensity depends on the abundance of the gene of interest. So if you have a lot of gene, the gene is expressed a lot of amount, so you, leave, you have a high signal. The film is developed developed to create a permanent record of the colony. Use, you can use a digital instrument to detect a probe binding. The film is then compared with the orig original agar blade to identify which colony contain recombinant plasmid with the gene of interest. So let's see again the process diagrammatic. So we have the bacteria grown on plate. Of course, these bacteria have all, let's say for instance, the, it, it is a cDNA library. So each bacteria have a different insert inside it come from the messenger RNA of genes of, that had been expressed. So in this bacteria that is cloned, you place a nylon mem membrane, a nylon membrane over the uh, colony. Uh, then you take a nylon membrane or a filter over this colony. Then you treat the nylon with a detergent or NOH to lyse the bacteria and denature DNA. So you, so you now have on the filter paper a denature DNA. Denature DNA, that means single strand. You, you, you need to fix the DNA to the nylon and then add the, the probe. The probe is, a, is the sequence that you know already and need, you need this sequence to search if the gene of interest is present or not. The probe, you can see on the uh, inset um, that has been en enlarged, the probe is a, a small sequence of DNA that will bind to its complementary uh, sequence on the DNA on the filter. So after that, you leave to develop, you will see two spots here, for example, on the developed film. This means that the gene is existing in two locations or two bacteria. So once you know the two locations, you align this filter paper again on the blade and you can see which, which bacteria contain this uh, gene of insert. And you took these uh, two bacteria and inoculate into uh, LB broth 
for media to grow. So that's mean you isolated the gene of interest or the bacteria containing your gene of interest. That's colony hybridization. Library screening to identify continuum. Library screening rarely results in the cloning of the full length genes. Okay, so you, you really you only get a fragments of the genes. Usually, got small pieces of the gene. The pieces are sequenced, and the scientists look for overlapping sequence, look for the start and the stop codon to know when the full length of the gene is obtained. Uh, PCR. Uh, this is uh, PCR. is uh, It's a very good technique used in recombinant technology, developed in the mid '80s by Kari Mulls. Technique for making copying or amplifying a specific sequence of DNA in a short period of time. The PCR process, um, basically it's a, a target DNA to be un identified in the tube, mixed with nucleotides, the four types of nucleotides, buffer with, with DNA polymerase, uh, this uh, addition, with additional forward and reverse primers are added, shown they are short single-stranded um, DNA, uh, 20 to 30 base pair. The primers are complementary uh, to nucleotide flanking opposite edges of DNA. The reaction tube is placed in a thermocycler uh, for a BCR cycle. Each cycle, uh, each BCR cycle must consist of three uh, phases. The denaturation at around 96 degree, the annealing, this means the temperature uh, when the um, uh, primer primers hydrogen bonds with the complementary uh, bases at the opposite ends at degree at uh, uh, degree around 55 to 65 then you have an extension from 70 to 75 degrees centigrade uh, by the end of the cycle that's mean in that phase the dna polymerase copies target dna at the end of one cycle you can repeat it up to 30 or even 40 the amount of dna has been doubled if uh, you we can see it again here from the figure you have a double-stranded DNA, you start the denaturation, the first phase, the DNA is formed, uh, which are around, uh, is, uh, formed, uh, is divided into, is digested into single-stranded DNA. The primer, the forward and reverse primer binds with complementary sequence. In the extension stage, uh, the polymerase start uh, uh, forming uh, uh, double-stranded DNA. All this is uh, cycle one. You can repeat this cycle to have like a million copy of DNA. Uh, you can see here that uh, BCR cloning can take advantage of an interesting quirk of thermostable, thermostable polymerase. So you can see here the target DNA, and this is the region you need to be cloned. <coughs> you denature DNA, and then uh, uh, primers are annealed. So amplify DNA with a TAC DNA polymerase. This TAC DNA polymerase usually adds a nucleotide to the end of the PCR product. So it adds a nucleotide to the end of the BCR product. So you can use this advantage when cloning to a T vector. T vector. The T vector usually have a single stranded thymine nucleotide at each end. So the existence of a thymine in the T vector, vector, uh, T vector DNA, and the existence of additional adenine in the insert you have uh, you, have, you have amplified, will ligate easily and make like a, a small sticky ends without the need of any restriction enzyme to uh, to uh, make the recombinant plasmid. And then you took this recombinant plasmid and transformed to the bacteria. As DNA is copied, these take and the other polymerase used for BCR normally add a single adenine nucleotide to the three end of the BCR product. After amplifying a target gene, cloned BCR product can be ligated into plasmid called T vector. Okay, the T vector, the advantage of T vector that it contains single stranded thymine nucleotide at each end that can complementary base uh, pair with the overhanging adenine nucleotide in BCR product. Advantage of PCR. Of course, you know that the most advantage it can amplify millions of copies of target DNA from small small starting material uh, in a short time of, uh, period of time. Two n. So n is the number of BCR cycles. So if you if you done like ten cycles, you will have like two to the power ten. Okay, number uh, of molecule of DNA as a product. The type of DNA polymerase used is very important. So the TAC DNA polymerase isolated from species of um, uh, bacteria called uh, Thermus aquaticus, and this uh, uh, they discover these bacteria in hot springs. And these bacteria have the TAC DNA polymerase that is now it's normally used in BCR. The application 
you can ma making DNA probes, studying gene expression, detecting viral and bacterial infections, diagnostic of genetic uh, condition, detection of DNA from fossilized dinosaur tissues, detection of trace amount of DNA from tissue found at crime scenes, cloning PCR product is rapid and effective compared to other DNA libraries. The disadvantage need to know something about DNA sequence that flanks the gene of interest to design primers. And notes, design primer includes restriction site sequence. You need the primer to have a restriction enzyme to, e to be easily being digested after doing the PCR to be easily being introduced into a vector. The product and the vector must digest by this enzyme, then they ligate. If you look here, uh, this is an important slide showing the different application of PCR. Of course, it's application of rare DNA sequences for human genetic testing and disease diagnostic, for DNA cloning, for studying gene expression, for forensic DNA analysis, for paternity testing and family relationship, for human remains identification, even uh, corpse cadavers, for diagnostic tests, uh, uh, for diagnostic tests for diseases came from viruses or pathogen. Thank you.